Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, thank you once again, or for the very first time, for choosing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. Now, if you ever had any doubt that The Order of the Thorn was not a true blue point-and-click adventure game, well, wait until you hear this. It's normal in this game to gather an eclectic collection of items in your inventory. Try using your inventory in unique ways on people, objects, or other items. There is always a solution to any given puzzle. Yeah, well that is the tricky part, isn't it, game? Trying to figure out the solutions to the puzzles without tearing out your hair in frustration. And there are no situations where you can get into an unwinnable position. Well, that's good to know, and no, that's not sarcasm. It's one thing I always disliked about a lot of older adventure games. They would have these unwinnable situations, these fail states, and more often than not, they would just sneak up on you, and you would have no idea that you did something wrong until it was too late. And if you're like me, you kept bad saves, so you kind of ended up screwing yourself over without even realizing it, and then you had to start all over again, and then you lose your weekend. I'm looking at you, Gold Rush. But anywho, the rest of these boxes are just explain how to play the game. And this is your typical two mouse button point and click. Right click looks at stuff, left click interacts, and that's all you need to do in this game. Right and left click, talk and look, wander the map, save the game. And yeah, they even have voice acting for the saves. Please enter a longer name. It's pretty impressive all around. I mean, just look at that options menu. It is one of the nicer option menus that I've seen in an AGS game. I mean, this game's like, the production values, they're up there. So after being thoroughly impressed by the high quality options menu, I finally had control over my character, and I began looking for a queen. And no, we're not looking for Freddie Mercury here, although that would be a hell of a game. Hello there. How is your search for the queen going? Oh, that? No. Oh, I gave up already. Now, I know I've been lollygagging the options menu for a while, but still in real time, it's been mere minutes since the has been like, go find my wife, and this dude's already given up. Oh, Chucker, I kinda doubt you're the fairy kingdom's best and brightest. So at any rate, we can talk for him a while, and get the lay of the land, which is nice. And also, we find out his reasoning for why he's given up. Basically, he doesn't want to walk around. Did he not understand what he was signing up for? I mean, what do you expect this challenge to be, like desk work? What fairy tales has he been reading? You don't need a drink at the moment. So this game has a nice slow start. At least for me it did. I guess if you know what you're doing, you just go straight to the puzzling. But if you're like me, you want to spend your time walking around looking at stuff, getting invested in this world, and learning about its lore. Now, some things I discovered about the Fairy Kingdom by looking around and talking with everyone included that this happy-go-lucky place apparently had a terrible war against some guy called Mr. Sinister and some other evils before then. So this happy-go-lucky land, it's seen some strife, and this has been a peace earned through blood. Pretty intriguing. And it also serves as a pleasant counterbalance to the saccharine sweet world we're in. And our saccharine sweet protagonist. I mean, this dude, he's like this close to being a child presenter for preschoolers. So damn nice and lovable and kind, it almost makes me nauseous. But anywho, what's a game without conflict? So after I left a favorite town, this happened. You reach the base of the hill when you notice a mischievous pixie swooping down towards you. Hey, hey give that back! <laughs> Silly bard, it's mine now. I keep it. Our hero just got mugged by a pixie. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Although it does make me wonder what the bandits were. That mugged him on his way over here. They're probably like little white mice with little toothpick swords. It's kind of pathetic to see your protagonist just taken down by a little flying pixie. I mean, dude, just take your loot and try to swat at her. But now our hero just stands there and takes it. So now not only do we have to find the queen and beat the king's challenge, but we gotta find this pixie lady and get our book back. Our book of songs that was written by our daddy. Because again, genius musician. And we didn't memorize these songs because I guess we're too high on favorite dust or whatever drugs the musicians do in this land. Oh look, it's a legendary hero that killed Lord Sinister. I bet he could have stood up to the pixie. Hello, Faola. What can I do for you, Bard? Uh, have you seen any pixies? Yes, actually. They live in a grove up north of here. Oh, well guess where we're going. We're going up north and we're going to give these pixie ladies a piece of our mind. But first along the way, we're going to pick up a flower over here across the pond because we're going to need it later on. But then we're going to have our vengeance upon the pixies. What do you want? Forgive me, little fairy, but you've got my songbook. It's very precious to me and I'd like it back. Yeah, 
Flynn just asks nicely to the thief. Just, could I please have the thing back that you stole from me, pretty please? I mean, your daddy is supposed to have been a badass warrior. What the hell did he raise you on? Rainbows and unicorns. Actually, are there unicorns in this universe? Because I would totally want to ride a unicorn. Silly man. We're pixies, not fairies. Everybody knows that. And don't even think about trying to take our book. We found it, and it's ours. It's not yours. You stole it right out of my hands, and I would like it back. No, it's ours now. Yeah, I'm starting to think these pixies may be too gangster for Flynn to handle. Perhaps he should call in the Popo or the Kingsguard or whatever they're called in this universe. There must be something we can work out. Well, maybe there's something you could do. So Finn agrees to help the gangster pixies, and no, you don't get any dialogue options in this game. Apparently, they lost their harp in the swamp. So now, we gotta go to the swamp and find some little pixie harps. So now, not only do we gotta find the queen, and not only do we have to get our daddy's book of songs back, but we gotta go to some swamp to find some harp for some pixies that just robbed us. We are off to a hell of a start in this game. So now we've got a lot of things to do, and as you would imagine, they're all interconnected and eventually will lead up to us finding the queen. But for now, we gotta wander around this map, and to be perfectly honest with you, this reminds me of Keen's Quest, and I mean that in a good way. It's like open world in that Keen's Quest kind of way. You just wander around, look at stuff, most of the time, a lot of the rooms are pretty barren with not much of anything to pick up, but hey, they look really nice, and they give you a sense of, well, you're on an adventure. And you do run across some pretty cool stuff. I can't allow you to pass. Oh, hello, Foxy Spider Lady. She's like a mermaid, but with a spider bottom. What would you call that? Spider Maid. Ooh, I like that. It sounds like a bad Marvel superhero ripoff. I'm sorry, Madame Spider, but I need to pass. Whatever for, dear young bard. I'm trying to find the queen for the king's challenge. Ah, a good and noble bard. No doubt on his way to sing songs of glory. That's what I'd like to do. I just need to have a proper adventure before I can write my magnum opus. I'm sure you will, young one. So I will tell you this. Beyond this point lies the kingdom of spiders. And you do not want to visit there for this challenge. Why not? <sighs> Look, kiddo. The king ordered that I not let anyone pass beyond this point. The queen is somewhere within the fairy realm. And no further. I see. <laughs> Sorry to bother. Thank you for your help. Perhaps someday we might meet again under other circumstances. Mm-hmm. I hope so. That'd be awesome if a spider lady's our love interest. Although you do wonder how that would work. Would she, like, lay eggs and then we would just... Well, it's the same problem with the mermaid, isn't it? We spiders are often misunderstood. We are good neighbors to the fairy folk, and not the monsters people often paint. I will always remember that. Farewell, little bard. Perhaps you will sing songs of me someday. Well, Flynn, if worse comes to worse, you can always do a cover of You're a Heap Spider Woman. Count on it. Well, that was lovely and kind of pointless. Unfortunately, at least in this game, there's just not a whole lot you get to do with a spider lady. You can talk to her, and she's like, yeah, you can't leave this area, and that's about all the interaction we're ever going to get with her. Shame, really. But nevertheless, we just gotta wander around the map some more and... Look for some adventure, because that's what you do in a Keen's Quest style game. You just wander around, pick up items, and run across random events, or just encounter things hanging out, doing their jobs. Like this troll over here. Trolls are renowned the world over for three things. Oh, pray tell, narrator, what are trolly stereotypes? They are too stupid to learn the common tongue, they live near bridges, and they love treasure. Okay, well now thanks to Mr. Narrator, I know I need to get some treasure for the troll, and unfortunately we can't talk to him. He's just such an uber capitalist and believes strongly in privatized roads and bridges that he just won't speak to us until we pay him something that we're going to have to find somehow, some way, at some point later on in the game. So now we got like four things to do. Thing number one, find the queen. Thing number two, get our daddy's songbook back. Thing number three, find some harps for some pixies. And thing number four, find some treasure for a troll. My god, things just keep stacking up. We got a pretty busy schedule. I probably should write some of this stuff down. Darn it all! Would you two stop following me? Little sir, all we wanted to do was help. We're just trying to help. Lass, 
Tis the most willing horse that gets worked to death first. And sure as flowers can grow in dung, you two will be the death of me. But, little sir, we just have to make sure you get home all right. And you were in such a tizzy a few moments ago. A tizzy? I ain't now, nor have I ever been in a tizzy. What a terrible thing to say to a gnome. Besides, I wasn't in trouble. I was just caught off guard a bit is all. But you almost fell into the river. To think of those raging currents. Little sir, you could have washed up, well, who knows where. I would never have fallen in the river, lass. And what's more, you can call a gnome stout, you can call a gnome stocky, but you cannot call a gnome little. Lucky they're of the gentle sex or I'd have words with them fist like. Insulting strangers in the forest. Well, damn, we finally get to meet our first non happy go lucky character. Well, other than the troll, but the troll doesn't speak. But yeah, first encounter with a grumpy Gus that speaks in this game. And actually, the gnome's pretty much the only grumpy Gus in this whole game. But hey, whenever he pops in, it's certainly a nice and welcome tonal shift. All we wanted to do was help. Some people simply have no manners at all. Forgive us, good stranger. We've not met before. Uh, no, we haven't. Although I saw you in the King's Court earlier. I'm Finn. Oh, yes, the Bard. I love music. I'm Red, and my friend here is Snow. It's a pleasure to meet you both, ladies. Do you play any music yourself, Red? Oh, no. I love listening to a beautiful song. But I have no talent in that area myself. She writes her own songs, you know, Finn. Don't tell him that, Snow. They're not very good. If a song is written with love and attention, then it's a good song. Yeah, Flynn, I doubt you could say that about all those angsty songs written by teenagers for their love interests. But nevertheless, we now get introduced to one of the very important mechanics to this game, and that's the whole song system that, unfortunately, I ain't gonna show you right now because I didn't realize it. But basically, this lady's gonna teach us a song that we can play later on, and also her friend's gonna teach us a song that, once again, we can play later on. But right now, that's not important. What is, though, is that I wonder if these two sleep together. Or do they wear other people's skin? I mean, we gotta wander around the maze some more. Oh, would you like our watermelon? We're not going to eat it, and we'd share it with you. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. You take the watermelon graciously. Damn, this is just such a share and share like world. We should try to play them a jam. That's right, this is my very first attempt in my first playthrough of this game, trying to play some music. It kind of feels like Ocarina of Time. I never played that game, but I remember they had a music system. I've seen the screenshots, or like the loom. But either way, we gotta play some jams for these folks because we got a free watermelon. Welcome to your songbook. Here, you're to use the loot in hard mode. You start by pressing the button which pay close attention if you use the loot in easy mode. Simply pressing the song button will have fun. Yeah, I'm too much of a tough guy to read through a tutorial. I just figured I'd wing it. Ooh, maybe we can play some winger on here. Kids like that band, right? She's only 17. No, I don't think that's a popular song anymore. <laughs> Yeah, those are some epic jams. And also, I probably would have benefited from paying attention to the tutorial because I didn't realize it was in hard mode, which meant that I actually had to do the Simon Says thing here and click on the buttons and the order that the song played it in. I thought it was default easy mode, so I'm like, yeah, playing some jams here. But no, I wasn't. I was not. And I realized that only later on in the playthrough. So many opportunities missed to just play random music for no reason. But yeah, this is a fundamental part of this game. You're going to have to play music because music puts, for lack of a better word, stasis effects on people and things. So it's a key way to solve puzzles. Sometimes you gotta play a jam and boom, something happens. So with that said, we're pretty much done with the introduction of this game. We got a bunch of quests now. And we just got exposed to the music system for the very, very first time. So this seems like an ideal place just to leave it be, folks. So thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. I've been some guy. And part three of this little over-analysis will begin very soon. Actually, right after I'm done recording this. So bye, guys.